Well, grace and peace be to each of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is indeed the Christ, the Anointed One of God. And let us pray. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks and praise for the day that you have given to us, a day that you have made. We rejoice in it. We rejoice in you. And Father, we just thank you for your word, your beautiful word, the written word, the spoken word, the incarnate word. Father, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts would indeed be acceptable in your sight. I pray that this word would wash over us today and heal us in ways that we cannot imagine, but in ways that we need. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody here ever had a poor opinion of themselves? A poor opinion of themselves. Anybody here? <laughs> Depending upon what you've done the day before. And how old you are, Well, you know. Um, I have. I've wrestled with that a lot in my life. And uh, many of you know that on Thursday mornings, I have the opportunity to go to Corpus Christi and meet with folks every Thursday, 7.30 in the morning, which usually the biggest thing on my mind is, do I even want to get up? I sure am glad I got up this past Thursday. Uh, although it can be a challenging time to get up and meet with these people, because I just think they're just way over my head when it comes to what they're thinking. I'm like going, I am not even in the same league. It's like going, man. One of the folks uh, asked the question, This uh, well, actually, he said he just got married, so like two weeks ago. So he said, um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about lately about who I am. And we're going, oh, this is going somewhere. And he says, you know, we're human beings, don't you? And most of us think we're human doings. Uh, who are we? That question was posed to us on Thursday. Then we were asked to answer the question by considering who we are in God's eyes. You see, we tend to think of ourselves in the world's eyes and not God's eyes. God has a much different picture of us than what we've got. And, and so we started throwing out different things about who God says we are. Things that we can find here in the Bible. So they're true. Okay. They're in the Bible, so they're true. So there's nothing glossed over. It is all true about what the Word of God tells us. And as we started tossing these things out, these descriptions of who we are, in God's sight, I started taking notice and I thought, oh my gosh. More and more people have got to hear this. Because as I was hearing all of this, all kinds of hurts in my own spirit were being healed by God and by his word. Now, I do actually have a list of these for all of you, but I just want you to listen. I even have the scripture passages for all of you. I just want you to listen to who you are in Christ Jesus. Because he is really the one who defines us. Who we are in Christ Jesus. And we're going to start at the basics, okay? of who we are. The very first thing that God tells us is that we are dust. 
Well, that doesn't sound too encouraging, does it? No, it doesn't sound too encouraging. And then when we get to, to James, we find out that we're a vapor and a mist that vanish in an instant. Well, that's not too encouraging either. Okay, I've got those out of the way. All right? But that's who we are. But guess what? Though we are dust and though we are a vapor that vanishes in an instant, we will live forever. We will live forever. But guess what? In Christ, we are a holy people to the Lord. Just let these just, you know, just come over you and wash over you and hear the truth of it. You, we are a holy people to the Lord. Holy to the Lord. We are children of God. We're not children of the world. We're children of God. And we are God's witnesses in the earth. We are God's servants. We are the salt of the earth. And we are the light of the world. The salt of the earth and the light of the world. Jesus said that we have more value than many sparrows. We have great value in the Lord's eyes. Great, great value. We are Jesus' disciples. We are branches connected to the true vine. And we are Jesus' friends. Don't you just love being called God's friends? We're not alienated from him. He's our friend. And we're his friend. We are not of this world. Though we are in it, we are not of it. We're not our own. We are told we are bought with a price. We're not our own. We belong to God. We are the body of Christ and individually members of it. We are God's hands and his feet and his voice in the world. We are living epistles. Living epistles. People can read the gospel by looking at us. We are the temple of the living God. We are sons of God. We are one in Christ Jesus and Abraham's seed. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. We are members of the household of God. And we are complete in him. We are sons of light and sons of the day. Peter really nails it when he says that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people special to God, God's own special people. We are also people of God's pasture. And we are sheep of God's hands. We are clay being worked in the hands of the master potter, our God. In Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors. We are God's fellow workers in God's field and God's building. To God, we are the fragrance of Christ. We are God's workmanship. We are members of one another. We are the circumcision. We are of God. We are children of the Most High and stewards of the mysteries of God. We are the apple of God's eye 
and we are kings and priests. What a list. Did you know you were all of that? You know, we hear the passages, you know, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world, but you know when we, we get it all in a list and it looks like this, we go, that's us? That's us. That is who we are. But this is another thing that you've got to know. It is who we are. It is also who we are becoming. It is who we are, but it's also who we are becoming. Because Paul speaks of the already and yet the not yet. We've got it, but we don't quite have it. Okay? We've got it, but we haven't quite arrived yet there. We are all of these things, and yet this is still growing in each and every one of us. God's still at work in us. We're a work in progress, but this is who we are. Now, God does not tell us all these wonderful things, you know, just to stroke our egos. Um, although that's good too sometimes. But listen to what Peter writes when he says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. Why? That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you and I were not a people, but now you and I are the people of God. Once you and I had not received mercy, but now you and I have received mercy. What God has done for us, calling us out of darkness into his marvelous light and making us all of this in Christ Jesus our Lord, he wants to do with each person on earth. It is God's desire. Because you see, God's got a great big home ready and waiting for us to inhabit. Plus, a new earth is on the way, waiting for us to inhabit. But he doesn't simply want us to inhabit these places. He wants his family, his kids around him. I mean, he wants us to go running up to Abba, running up to our eternal Papa and saying, Daddy, 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 <laughs> we're home. But in the meantime, he wants us to remember who we are now. The fact that we have poor opinions of ourselves at times is not of God. That's what the world has done to us. Banging and molding and pressing us into the world's mold. We are told in the scriptures that, that God is making all things new. All things new. And yet we also hear in scripture that everything is already new. It's the already and the not yet again. A holy people to the Lord, children of God, God's witnesses, servants of God, the salt of the earth, the light of the world, more valuable than sparrows, many sparrows, Jesus' disciples, branches connected to the true vine, Jesus' friends, not of the world, not our own, the body of Christ, members of Christ's body, living epistles, the temple of the living God, sons of God, one in Christ Jesus, Abraham's seed, and so forth and so on, all of that in dust and vapor. That's pretty amazing, don't you think? And you know what? It's only going to get better and better. But our God wants us to grasp who we are right now. Because you see, how we grasp who we are right now is how we are going to present God out in the world wherever we go. If we were to go around going, oh man, this is just bad. I'm just being beaten down by the world. We are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. God dwells in us. 
I mean, with a, with a list like this, which we should carry around all the time, we should just stand up straight and say, Hey, God, how are you going to use us today? Whatever you want, Lord, just bring it on. Because I'm more than a conqueror, and I am your ambassador in the world. God will mold us and shape us into whatever he wants us and lead us into whatever he wants us to do. Our task is to keep listening to him for his instruction. Remember, Jesus did, did not do anything he didn't see the Father do. He took everything from the Father. He watched and then he did. He listened and then he spoke. That's our call. That's our call. And yes, God speaks today. He's not adding to this word, but he sure is confirming it. He sure is confirming it. I was, Thursday morning, I was just basking in the glow of who I am in Christ Jesus. I wanted you all to also know that too. We did something else that morning that just sort of sealed it all. We sang to each other. We don't necessarily sing well. But, you know, as we look around the room here, and we see in each and every one of us who we are in Christ Jesus, you know, we, we can sing to each other and say, you know, I love Helen with the love of the Lord. I love Helen with the love of the Lord. I see in Helen the glory of the Lord. I love Helen with the love of the Lord. We got lots of time. <laughs> Let's sing to one another, okay? Let's join in singing. We know everybody around the room here. Cordy, you want to be Cordy when we get to you? <laughs> or do you want some other name? We're going to call you Cordy. So I've already sung to Helen, but let's just, let's go this away, and we don't have to do it slowly. But just listen to the love, the glory of the Lord. And yes, you can sing to yourself. You can say, I love me <laughs> with the love of the Lord. I love me with the love of the Lord. Okay. That's how we're going to do me. We're singing together to eat two. Okay? We've done Helen. I love Mary with the love of the Lord. I love Mary with the love of the Lord. I see in Mary the glory of the Lord. I love Mary with the love of the Lord. I love Betty with the love of the Lord. I love Betty with the love of the Lord. I see in Betty the glory of the Lord. I love Betty with the love of the Lord. Wasn't that fun? You know what? Who we are in the Lord is very, very special. And that's who we were created to be from the beginning. From the very beginning. And that's all that sin messed up. Recently I was at a conference, the one where, you know, we got the DVDs and so forth, where the lady blew our socks off. And at a time of prayer, we were asked to ask God whatever it was that we wanted from him. Normally, I have a really hard time coming up with something to ask God for, for myself. My prayer request that day was simple but huge. And it was this. God, I want return to me. Whatever the enemy has stolen. I want return to me whatever the enemy has stolen. You see, the enemy has made it his 
work to steal from everybody. And so he has stolen our identity from us. I want it back. I hope you do too. Well, I hope you enjoyed finding out who you are. And I hope... You know, having sung, I love whomever with the love of the Lord, and I see in whomever the glory of the Lord will stick in your heads for a while. Because it's who we are. It's who we have been created to be. That's our real identity. Not what the world would make us believe. And it's not what even inside our heads would leave us, lead us to believe. So, Father, I thank you that you have made us to be your children, your ambassadors, your friends. We are the apple of your eye and kings and priests of the Most High God. We thank you that in Christ we are complete and there's nothing lacking. Father, we live in the already but the not yet. I just thank you, Father, for all that you are doing to restore to me and to us what the enemy has stolen. Father, we make that request of you today. Restore to us whatever the enemy has stolen. Father, we may not be ready for all that the enemy has stolen to be returned to us at one point in time, but I pray it will be returned to us. In Jesus' name.